guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Fernley Violence. In the last episode, we saw the birth of our very first toxic-bodied baby, who is of course this little golden daughter over here, Snakeweed. So she now has a bit of a distasteful appearance, just like how the uh, stinky tail gives them a distasteful scent. Her toxic body makes her look a little bit less appetizing to any predator who might be in the area. So the hope is that once we do take these creatures to the jungle, that our toxic-bodied creatures will be a little less likely to get munched on by the apes. They are actually immune to poison though, the apes in the jungle, so if they do decide to attack our toxic bodied creatures, then it's not really going to help us out very much because they won't actually get poisoned like um, the carnivores that we've dealt with in the past. Of course, we had a lot of carnivore action up here with Oak and Juniper. They did finally vanquish the carnivore that was wandering around in the grass, so they're kind of taking it easy right now. They could actually peer in a little bit of this grass around the nest so that hopefully one of their family members could use this in the future. It would probably be a good idea for Juniper to have a family just because she does have some very good genetics. She's one of the few who does not have the no paw right now. She doesn't have any sort of um, short-sighted eyesight or blindness in her genetics. So the only thing that um, is a little bit unfortunate about her is that she doesn't actually show the stinky tail and she does have the panda patterns which is so strange to say because I know that we absolutely adore the panda patterns in this series but it's not really going to help us in the jungle so from here on out we're going to try to mutate things like the stripes on our pack mates and of course the dots too. Timber is actually making his very slow way over to uh, where Seashell is at the moment. He's kind of on a mission because he's trying to help his family out. His family is whittling away piece by piece because so many of them are so sick. I think Ebony with her little frog toes is actually the only one in this area who isn't sick right now. So it's a little bit unfortunate, but she can at the very least hop around and uh, try to pick up all of the berries before the bunnies do. She is a pacifist just like her father, so she's not going to be harming the bunnies, but we can sit her right by this berry bush where um, her grandfather, I believe, used to pick from. So she can go ahead and pick those berries on the next turn. And then of course we can have Twilight on her very last turn pick up her berries like she usually does. She could actually scoot over here and pick up some of the shells as well and that is going to be her very final night on the island because she was so very sick and that took away so much of her lifespan. But let's have Ash knock down some more acorns so that Ismeme can come over here and grab them up for him. She could probably actually um, get rid of this nest right here since I don't think anyone is going to be using it at the moment. And then we have Elm who has come out of retirement so that she can pick up more food for the pack. She has basically done like a grand majority of the hunting for this side of the island. So we're going to let her go back to work because that seems like it's what she enjoys the most. And then we just have a couple more creatures to take care of way back here in the grass. Of course, Spruce, you do need to grab your soggy acorns again. So dip your big long nimble fingers into the water and grab up your acorns. And then I believe Nebula can actually knock down some more for you. There you go. Tons of acorns today. Tons of acorns for you to feast on. And oh my goodness, a little bunny came out to say hi too. Are you stealing our berries? Whoa, you have like an army back there. Are you all stealing our berries? Um, yes, you all definitely are. They are all stationed at like different berry bushes. This is not particularly good. I think we're going to have to expand the territory a little bit on this side so that we can hopefully take care of this uh, infestation of bunnies. But that should be just about all of the turns that we can make aside from you two back here. Oh my gosh, little Anara is very, very similar to a lot of the uh, royal lines that we've had on our islands. So we can move her right out of the nest so that she can hopefully pick from this berry bush in the future since she does of course have both of those nimble fingers on her. So she could actually scoop up all of the berries if she wanted to. Nova for now can go ahead and grab those berries for us. And then why don't we actually have them breed again? I'm not going to sit her in the nest on this turn because um, we do still have the toxic body in the mutation menu for the uh, babies in the swamplands. So we'll leave her right there for now or for that matter we could put her right here so that she's a little bit closer to some of this tall grass. And then Rokirku can go ahead and pick up all of the grass that he possibly can and just light up the area a little bit more for the rest of them. Now that should be all of the turns that we can make. So let's go way back here and see if maybe, maybe we'll get lucky and we'll get um, another one of those toxic bodied babies. Oh my gosh, he doesn't have the toxic body, but look how similar he is to his father. Oh 
my goodness, Nuku. And he has the warning dots too, which you can barely see on his black fur. Let's see if we can actually see it a little bit better if we go into um, the family tree right here. Little Nuku, how handsome is he? So he has the nimble fingers it looks like, which is very good to see. I mean, a lot of our creatures have the nimble fingers, so I am hoping that um, we could possibly make a little warrior line like we usually do. And in fact, I'm thinking that um, maybe Umbra will be the one to scoot on over here and start a family with quicksand since they both do have the claw. For now though, let's just take a quick peek around the area to make sure that nothing out of place is going on, that there's no carnivores out in the grass in particular. We do know that we can see that big red outline around the carnivores if there are any in the area, but so far so good. It looks like everyone is doing fine. We do have a little bunny over here in the darkness, especially now that Midnight has passed away, so she won't be able to protect her berry bush. And I think Ebony is just going to go ahead and pick from her own berries for now, because of course she's not too interested in um, snagging up the bunny herself. She wouldn't be able to, even if she wanted to, because she doesn't have any way of attacking, just like her father. Just like her father. They're both very, very um, passive creatures, so they're not too interested in gathering up all of that meat. But Ash can go ahead and gather his berries at the very least, and then I think we might want to have um, Ismim go around this way and at least grab this uh, grass for us. That way we can get a little bit more of that nesting material. Again, she is also one of the creatures who's not too interested in hunting the meat, but she would like to uh, make sure that they have enough material to make more nests. Now Timber, on the other hand, it looks like you can gather your very final gem. He's all fully grown, so now we can send him off a little bit further down the shore. He's still searching for um, that special healing fruit, though unfortunately he hasn't been able to find it in the grass just yet. Now let's have a seashell actually clear out a little bit of this grass around her. She was actually sniffing out a, a little berry bush of her own. There it is, right there. So she can scoot right over here, and then on the next turn she'll finally be able to clear out this area and use this as her own little home. Now we of course also have this new guy back here, Roduke Duke, who we found in the last episode when he was kind of getting swept away by the stream. So he made his very, very shocking entrance into uh, the Swampland pack. And I think um, Shadow might actually think of him as maybe like an adopted son almost. So he can make his own uh, little family here. We can have him go ahead and pick the uh, berries from this bush and then maybe scoot around this way so that he can clear out a little bit more of this grass for us. I think we're probably going to want to have Shadow come down here and do the same, just kind of pick up all of this grass in the area as his brothers say goodbye while they're making um, their way down the shore as well. So they can play a little bit of leapfrog to make sure that they get the most out of their turns. We can have Umbra scoot way up here, thankfully because he also has those nimble fingers, and for that matter, so does Galaxy. They could pick up all of these shells if they wanted to, but they are a little bit more interested in walking down the beach because it seems like um, quicksand and sea foam have definitely caught their eye. So I think we could have them make their little family right in this area, right in all of this tall grass. In fact, let's have Seafoam scoot up here so that she can clear out a little bit more of this area for us. And we won't even have to make one of the nests because we have one over here and I think I just saw a bunny, oh yes, stealing our berries. But unfortunately, we don't have enough turns to um, actually get those bunnies away from our berry bushes. So we'll just have Quicksand go ahead and clear out the grass around the area. We aren't really hurting for food at the moment anyway, so those bunnies can feast for a little while, get them nice and fat, so that when we can actually grab them, we'll be able to um, have a nice feast. Now, as far as the name for this newest little baby, why don't we name him Nightshade? I think that would go particularly well for him since he looks so much like his father. And then we could have Twilight go ahead and just uh, clear out the area around here. Oh my goodness, but that bunny back here, I almost forgot about you. Can Nebula actually snag you? Yes, she definitely can. So let's go ahead and gather up all of that food and wait a second. Oh, your little bunny friend has come up to say hi again, Oak. Oak had a very, very scared little visitor in the last episode too when we were hunting down the carnivores. So I think we'll let that bunny live. I I think that is your little friend and we definitely don't want to swipe him up. It doesn't look like the bunny is even um, collecting any of the berries right now anyway, so we should be fine. And for that matter, we could have Juniper make her way um, a little bit further into the grass because now it might be stealing our berries. Now it might actually be stealing them. Yeah, it looks like that has been picked clean. But at least we can guard that with a Juniper for now and then we could go ahead and just clear out a little bit more, oh my goodness, of this grass. That was the wrong move. Willow does not mind the bunnies as much. She definitely doesn't mind uh, picking away at them and gathering up all of that meat and all 
all of these bunnies, honestly. Like, this is literally an infestation of bunnies. Um, Spruce. Oh no, this is your last turn. This is actually your last turn. I was going to have him jump in there and try to get the bunny, but, you know, I think he would rather spend his last turn picking his very favorite meal, the soggy acorns from the water. Though it does look like he could actually jump over here and grab the bunny too, and that is going to spend, like, the very last of his energy just trying to gather up a little bit of extra food for the tribe. But now we can scoot back here and go back to work with Twilight and a hemlock too. Hemlock could actually help her out by just clearing out a little bit more of this grass. This is actually the bridge that they initially found that connected their territories. So we might as well just kind of clear it all out so that everyone can visit freely. Now this would be a good opportunity for us to change the mutation menu to fit these babies instead. So let's have Nova scoot over here so that she can um, still collect her berries and whatnot even though she's right on the nest. And then let's figure out how we want the mutation menu to look for their babies. We don't have to worry about the stinky tail thankfully because they both do have the stinky tail. They both have um, the short-sighted eyes in their genetics, so that might be something that we want to take a look at, as well as, of course, the no paw. We looked out with Anara because she managed to inherit the nimble fingers from both of her parents, but that's uh, not very likely to happen again, as we have learned. That no paw is very, very tricky to breed out of our lines. We should probably swap the uh, runner leg into the 30% slot just to make it a little bit more likely that that'll mutate over the no paw. And then uh, maybe instead of the normal eyesight, we'll try placing the stripes in here because that's another one of those things that we really want to try to mutate on our creatures as soon as possible. I think most of our striped creatures have passed away. Aside from Elm, of course, Elm is still uh, doing her very, very hard work on the shores, picking up all of that food for us. But we have Elm, we have um, Oak back here with the stripes, and I believe that is actually it. So the more stripes that we can gather up on our creatures, the better at this point. Now let's have Anara scoot over this way to clear out a little bit more of this grass, and then we could have Rokirku go ahead and expand the territory as well. There we go. So this is his childhood home too, so he is definitely enjoying his time here, creating his own little family on the places that um, he remembers so well from when he was a baby. But I think that is officially the end of this turn now, so let's go ahead and scoot over here and see um, what Nova's next baby is going to look like. Oh my gosh, again, so adorable, but he is sick. Okay, so he has double immunity gene A. Now, I did know that that could happen because, of course, um, they both have immunity gene A in their genetics, but I thought that would actually be a little bit more helpful for us because we have so many creatures with immunity gene F right now that at least if we bred this son with one of our females instead, we would be guaranteed to have a baby with immunity gene A. It looks like his father kind of named his son after himself, though, Kirku. Of course, his father's name is Ro Kirku, so that's quite interesting. We'll definitely keep that, though, because, of course, Ro Kirku is naming his children after the old ways of the old tribe. So for now, let's scoot him over this way so he can, oh my gosh, find another nest for us. An actual permanent nest. There we go. If only your parents had found that back in the day. We could actually have Nova come over here and uh, breed with him again and then sit straight in this nest for us. There we go. And we can clear out a little bit more of that area so that it's nice and safe. And then Anara could actually come over here and keep her brother company, her newest little brother who looks very, very much like her. Even though he doesn't have the ram horns, he does have that uh, fiery little mane that kind of looks like um, the same color of her ram horns, actually. So they are very, very similar. But Timber is going to keep making his way slowly down the shore. Unfortunately, since there aren't many critters over here, it's a little bit harder for him to make his way down there, but he is getting very close now. And look at all of these shells that we're leaving behind. Oh my goodness, Seafoam would be so upset with all of these shells that they're completely bypassing. She might actually have to make um, a little bit of a loop and come back down here to pick up some more shells later on with quicksand. But for now, they are definitely going to get started on their own little family. So let's move Galaxy up here right next to um, all of the other critters. And then we can move Umbra up here too. And um, yeah, I think Quicksand is going to breed with Umbra. So we'll have her come down here. He can breed with her and then she could actually um, use this nest that she found. She can sit right there and then we could have um, Seafoam go ahead and breed with Galaxy and create her own little nest right next to her sister. So we have this tiny little nursery kind of budding right next to the shore, which is very similar to where they were born too. So I'm sure that's bringing back a lot of memories for them. Now Seashell, let's have you clear out the area right around your berry bush. You could pick up the grass right here 
here so that we at least know that it's there and then go ahead and swipe up all of your berries. Almost all of them. We have just a couple more left on the bush. So on the next turn, she'll be able to pick up the uh, rest of those. And then Road Duke Duke, you can go ahead and pick your berries too. I'm sure um, your adopted father is very, very proud of the way that you're collecting all of these berries, especially now that so many of their tribe mates have passed away. We have the remains of Driftwood sitting right underneath this tree, and I think we could actually have maybe Hemlock come down here instead. So he could sit himself right by the tree too and pick up all of these acorns with his big cracker jaw. That would probably be a particularly good uh, place to settle him down since he does have, of course, um, that melanism trait, which makes him a little bit easier for the carnivores to spot. So we want to make sure that he's in an area where he's very, very safe. For now, Shadow, why don't you come down here and um, at least show your son how it's done? And now, Snakeweed, now that you are grown, you can actually start picking up uh, all of these different materials too. Oh my goodness, once again, the bunny invasion, the infestation. It's not even an invasion. It is literally an infestation of bunnies. Let's go ahead and start snagging as many as we possibly can, I guess. Um, Willow, you could actually jump on this one from behind and grab it for us. And then um, Nebula, I think you're actually going to want to wait because we still have these bunnies way over here. So let's leave her there with her turns and then, oh no, oh no, did we miss our chance to grab these berries? Berries. Yes, we definitely did. I feel like Juniper is starting to get very, very fed up with Oak's little bunny friend. She is very tempted to swipe at him right now, but Oak would be so sad, especially because this is his last day of life. So let's let him spend his very last day, oh my gosh, with his bunny friend. How adorable is this? So they're going to spend some a nice quality time together, and Juniper will just very begrudgingly clear out the area to use later. Now, unfortunately, on the very same day that Ebony is all fully grown and she can take on her very final gem, I believe her father is actually going to pass away. Yeah, this is his very final day as well, so Ebony is going to be left behind with um, her Aunt Ismim, so at least she won't be alone, but even she isn't going to be lasting much longer. I think just um, one more day herself because of course she's also sick. So Ebony is going to have to find herself a place where she can settle down too. Since she's not sick, since she is actually healthy with her immunity genes, we don't have to worry about the life getting completely sucked out of her. But because she can't attack, if something did spawn over here, then she would be in a very, very bad situation. So for now, we can have her pick her berries and then come over here to spend her very um, last day with her father, as he picks up his acorns, of course, and his berries too. And he could knock down a couple more for um, his family so that they'll be able to collect some more food for themselves. Just kind of preparing, thinking ahead, and making sure that they'll be nice and happy even after he passes. And for that matter, is meme can uh, come over here and grab the acorns too. There we go. And then that is the end um, for their turn. We just have Elm over here who has um, a little bit more food to possibly collect, though I'm pretty sure if she goes down to this tile right here, she's going to end up drowning just like quicksand. So she's going to be a little bit cautious. We're going to make sure that um, she doesn't go down there and instead she could come over here and pick up that shell. So let's maneuver her around the shore and actually there's even a safer ones over here. So let's put her right over here and gather up some shells. There we go. We have to be very, very mindful of where we place our creatures when they're so close to the water because it does seem like um, even though that still had the little paw print icon on it, it did actually harm them. Now, do we have your little bunny friend back here? We have so much bunny meat, but unfortunately the bunnies are just a little bit too far away. So I guess you're going to have to just um, collect what you can, Nebula. We could have you come over here and pick up all of the meat that your mother collected, actually. There we go. Though that leaves a huge batch of darkness behind you, especially now that so many of your tribe mates have passed away. So we're going to have to try to spread you guys out or uh, maybe even bring some of the little babies up toward this way once um, they've grown enough because most of our families are actually thriving over in the southern parts of the island. So I guess we can skip the turn out. Looks like all of our turns have been used. We actually have three babies being born on this turn now. So I think we should probably zoom in on um, our little sisters back here. Our little sisters and see what sort of babies they're going to have. Oh my gosh, no. This is not good. The very first children of our shell sisters has unfortunately drawn the attention of a carnivore, and I'm not sure if we're going to be able to take care of him in time. I mean, Quicksand is going to use all of her energy that she possibly has to try to whittle him down as much as she can. Let's go ahead and slap him as many times as possible, but I don't think that's going to be enough. He still has 
six days left on him. So Umbra, can you make it up there in time? I'm not sure if he can. Let's see. Um, Seafoam does have a little bit of strength on her. I mean, again, the problem is, is that he positioned himself in the perfect location right between the berry bushes. We could possibly have somebody cut down this berry bush instead if anyone has the strength to. Unfortunately, it's not Seafoam though because her attack isn't um, high enough to actually cut down the berry bush. And I don't think Galaxy is going to be able to either because of course he doesn't have a claw. So we might be out of luck. Oh no, this is absolutely awful. I mean, Seafoam, just go ahead and attack this guy as much as you can, but that's still three days left. If we could only move Umbra around, then we would be fine. Maybe if Galaxy could at least clear a path for him, we'll have Galaxy come up here, and then Umbra can scoot over this way, and there we go. Now we can attack the Carnivore for hopefully the last time. Let's see, with that big strong claw, Umbra, can you protect your babies? There we go, and now Little Bunny has come out to see what's going on. He's just kind of like, poking his head out, looking around for this big carnivore that he heard rustling away in the grass. Do we have anything else to uh, be concerned about over here? That was very, very worrying. I mean, if that carnivore was still alive, I wonder if he would have actually swiped at our babies in the nest. Of course, if our babies are attacked because they're so young, they will get completely killed in one swipe. So that was a very, very delicate situation. But now we have two brand new babies to take a look at, and this one actually has the spots. Thankfully, he was also born without his father's no paw. So we lucked out in that regard. We have the runner leg and the nimble fingers. And then it looks like this baby over here actually inherited his mother's fishing tail and the cracker jaw too, which is quite interesting. That would be um, from his grandmother, I believe, because Quicksand's mother was the one with the uh, cracker jaw. So it kind of skipped a generation and ended up on her grandbaby. That's pretty neat. But otherwise, it is a little bit disappointing that her baby didn't end up with the claw. So I think next time we breed her, we might actually place the claw in the mutation menu just to be um, a little bit more sure that that's what we end up receiving. Of course, the nimble fingers came from Umbra. He does also have the claw, so my hope was that maybe we could end up with babies with like those double claws again like we used to have, because I know we are going to want to have at least a little bit of strength in the jungle. We're not meant to fight the apes, but there are other dangers that we're going to have to be aware of, so we'll just have to keep that in mind. Now, Seashell, it looks like you have a little bunny trying to steal your berries, and I don't think that is going to please you as it pleases some of the other members of our tribe. So let's have you jump down here and grab this bunny, and there we go, we actually found a nest too. How perfect is that, that we have a nest right next to her very own berry bush, and she managed to find it when she was uh, trying to grab that bunny. Let's actually see if Timber can make his way right over here. Oh, so close. So close to being able to start their family on this very turn. But I think he would actually be a drawn toward her anyway because she does show a lot of interest in um, the plants in the area. So maybe he came here just uh, trying to find a little bit more information about this mysterious fruit that he's heard of. This mysterious healing fruit. And while she's not exactly going to have the answers, it does seem like um, this would be a pretty good spot for them to start their own family. They're going to have a lot of spotty little children because they both have the dots, of course. Now, we did have one more baby back here to take a look at, and oh my gosh, he looks so much like his father. Aside from the no paw, unfortunately, it's almost like his um, claw kind of withered away. Duke Fun, he does have the stinky tail. He has the same eye color as his father. He looks so much like his father. Let's um, actually have Nova kind of clear out the grass around here just to keep her baby safe, especially now that we had that run-in with the carnivore. And in fact, let's zoom out for a moment and just make sure that there aren't any more carnivores in the area, in the immediate area around our pack. So far, so good. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that right now, but we can at the very least go ahead and clear out just a little bit more of this grass so that we're absolutely sure. Now, I think I saw a little bunny skitter off into the darkness. There it is. There's one way over there, but um, I think Elm is just going to stick to her shells for now. We'll have her go ahead and pick up her shells on this side, and then unfortunately, Ash has passed away, and this is, again, Ismeme's very last turn. So let's just have her pick up the berries, and then um, I guess Ebony is going to have to find her own way out in this world. She's going to have to find a place away from this tree that she has known for her entire life and see if maybe she can uh, make a home somewhere else though she could possibly run into her own mother. I mean, I'm not sure if she really remembers her mother, Nova, because she did leave when she was very, very young. So maybe she can uh, join up with this little tribe over here and they can, um, at the very least, keep her safe. Oh no, Juniper. 
Oh no, <laughs> the bunny is back here. Did he steal your berries again? Oh my gosh. Okay, well, Oak has passed away, so we are going to assume that he's not watching over us right now, and Juniper is finally going to do what she wanted to do so long ago and grab this bunny so it can't terrorize her anymore and she can pick her berries in peace. Let's just make sure that there aren't any more in the area. Yeah, that was the only bunny, the only little bunny hopping around. So, Juniper, you will finally be able to pick from that berry bush on the next turn when they grow back a little bit more. Now we have you two back here, Willow, on your last turn, and then Nebula, who has um, quite a bit of life left in her, but she's probably going to want to uh, spread out a little bit more. Come back down here, in fact, and pick up all of this meat that she left. And then um, let's actually have Willow make her way down here because I think she would want Nebula to go after her brothers. She wouldn't want her daughter to be left all on her own when she passes. So we'll make sure that she has a little bit of um, a safe passageway for the next turn. And then you guys for now can go back to clearing out the area, I suppose. We'll clear up all of this grass over here. And I think we probably should have Twilight breed again with um, Shadow. We'll have Shadow leave behind the acorns for Hemlock to gather instead. And we'll scoot him along this way so that he'll be able to breed with Twilight. And then on the next turn, she'll be able to pick one of these nests to actually settle down in. Now with all of the commotion, I almost forgot to name these little babies back here. So let's figure out a good name for them. Um, I think for this one in particular, let's name him a Sandstorm. Kind of a little nod to his mother since he looks so much like her anyway. And then our newest little spotty baby we could actually name Tidepool. So again, a little bit of a nod to his own mother. Even though he doesn't look too much like her, she does spend a lot of her time in the tide pool, so it would be a very fitting name. But let's go ahead and skip the day one more time and hope that uh, nothing else jumps out at us. I don't think we have any uh, babies to actually watch being born on this turn, but we do have bunnies in the nest. Really, little guy? Really? Now you're just invading my nest? Well, let's go ahead and skip the day and just make sure that there aren't any carnivores to deal with first. And then we are definitely going to jump in there and get this bunny out of our nest. Honestly, you. Let's have Twilight jump in here and just scatter all the bunnies for us because she was going to the nest anyway. There we go. So that was part of her plan. We were going to settle her down there. We'll have to make sure that we place the uh, toxic body in the mutation menu for her. And we should probably move you guys out of the nest so that um, your children can grow. We'll have Seafoam scoot over this way and then Umbra could actually gather the meat from the carnivore. That'll give us a nice big boost, but I think we definitely want to make sure that um, these pairings in particular are going to have more babies pretty soon too. So let's have Seafoam gather up some of her berries and then we could have Galaxy actually scoot down here to breed with her. He could actually gather the berries too because he does have the nimble fingers. And then we might as well scoot Tidepool right out of the nest and oh my goodness, somebody is stealing our berries again. Oh, we are getting attacked from all sides today. Every single bunny has come out to play. And um, we'll have Seafoam sit in her nest, her little makeshift nest, and there we go. Wrong move, little guy. Really? Really? You had a friend waiting for you? Oh my gosh, so many bunnies. We might actually have to have a quicksand make her way around here and just scatter the bunnies for us. There we go. So we managed to take out another one at the very least, but um, it is going to take her an extra turn to not only gather up the food, but to have another baby. And then why don't we turn our our attentions over to um, this pairing too. So let's just uh, clear out this area a little bit more. We'll have Timber pick up the grass right on the nest for us. And then we could have Seashell move over here so that she'll be able to breed with him. And then in the next episode, they can start their own little brood of spotty babies for the jungle. But for now, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys.